Boom, what's up everybody, my name is Kim and today we're gonna be installing Manjaro uh, using the uh, manual partitioning mode. So you wanna choose boot with open source drivers if you're on AMD and boot with proprietary drivers uh, if you're on uh, Nvidia cards. And you just use the arrow keys to go up and down and then hit enter key to go on. So once it boots up here, we're going to start this whole tutorial. Let me get rid of this box here. So this is what you'll be presented with once you boot it up on your machine and you're ready to install it. So all you got to do is hit this launch installer down here. It's going to come up, ask you for your uh, language. I'm US English, I'm in New Orleans, Chicago is my time zone here for the most part. Hit next, you can test your keyboard, I am US English and default. Hit next, and this is where we're going to do it differently than the last video. We're going to hit manual partitioning, and then next. So you can see we don't see anything here, that's because we have to create a new partition table. So click that, make sure you choose GUID partition table or GPT. Hit OK. You can see now we have free space here and it shows you the space you have available on your drive. So mark it, go to create. The first thing we need to make is the boot partition. So you can get away with uh, 300 but I'm going to use 512 just because of like that number. if my keyboard would like to work there we go so now we're gonna choose the file system we gotta go here and choose file 32 and the mount point is gonna be boot slash boot slash EFI and then we gotta go down here to the flags and hit boot now we're gonna press OK now we can say that it created or it has allocated that part of the, the drive for the boot partition. So again, go to free space, create. Now you gotta choose how much you wanna allocate to your root partition. So I'm gonna do, uh, let's say, 20 gigabytes here. Go to five. And now you can choose your file system you wanna use for the rest. You can see you got a whole bunch here to uh, to choose from. We're just gonna stick with ext4 because if you're using one of these other ones, you're probably not gonna uh, need this tutorial. You can choose to encrypt it, put in your passphrase here. I'm not gonna do it since I'm on a uh, virtual machine. Mount point here is gonna be just a forward slash. Don't have to do anything else. No flags. You don't have to do it. Now we're just going to hit OK, and then we got a free space again. Now we're going to create the home directory. What does that say? So let's do 25 and to There we go. The mount point home. Don't have to do anything again. So now you can see here we have about 5.6 gigabytes free. You just click it, create, and then you go to file system and Linux swap, and then you can mark it as a swap as well on the flag. Now we used it all. So now you just have to do next, put in your credential, uh, and then your password or passphrase. You can log in automatically. I would use this one if you have uh, encrypted those two partitions we talked about, but we didn't. I want to use the same password for both root users uh, uh, and login. If not, if this is a machine that several people are using and you don't want them to be able to install packages, remove certain files and do that sort of stuff, make a different password here. But again, I'm just doing it on a virtual machine. Hit next, gives you overview or what's coming. Then install, get this dialog box up. And hit install, and just tells you that everything will be formatted. So if you have anything on that drive, you're gonna lose it. 
I'm gonna shut up now and we're gonna time and see how long Wasting here, waiting for another year. We both know the score. We have been here once before. So many words unspoken. You took my heart, it's already broken. You don't have to wait. I can take the pain. I will surrender. Let me go on a new adventure. There we can see it's all done. So now I just have to hit the restart and then done. I think that took just under two minutes, but we'll know for sure once I put the timer on it when I edit this video. So now just rebooting up here. Once it's reboot, it takes a little bit longer the first time. And then uh, I gotta do that extra step and make sure we. Make sure I can make full screen here so y'all can see it. So I just gotta go remove those two, go here. I'm gonna upscale it. Or not upscale, I'm just gonna set the uh, correct resolution. I honestly don't like these pop up bucks when you're doing the startup like after first install so I'm gonna close down Firefox because I accidentally clicked it so you won't see Firefox opening I'm gonna close this bar and this is how it looks when you open it for the first time or you start starting it for the first time and I'm gonna open up um, the console here just really quickly and then I'm gonna make it bigger and we're gonna see here once it gets settled down for a little bit I'm gonna cl clear these as you can see we're using about 1.27 gigabytes of RAM and uh, we only have about 80 tasks so KDE is actually very lightweight it's not much more than uh, what I had on XFCE the reason I went over and chose KDE was I had some scaling issues with my 4k displays uh, on XFCE for some reason I could not figure it out but on KDE it works perfectly so if you like this tutorial and want to know my next steps on uh, a fresh install of Manjaro, uh, hit that subscribe button, uh, ring that notification bell, and leave me a comment down below if you're excited to start uh, using Linux and free and open source. I'll see you all next time.